Oi, you know what time it is. You're tuned in listening to the Dry That Aussie Metal Guy. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss any of his content when it drops. And remember, stay brutal, you mad dogs. Roof. G'day, how you all going? It's Dry That Aussie Metal Guy here with Crank.com and with that metalstation.com. So today and tonight, wherever you are in the world, it is a great pleasure that I'm having a chat with John Mako from the almighty Fifth Angel legendary metal band who are due to release their double A album when angels kill through nuclear blast on 16th of june is the second album through nuclear blast as well john thank you very very much for joining me my friend thank you for having me um i'm love to be here uh, absolute absolute pleasure man first off um concept album man absolutely rip and rip an album tell me a little bit about the story behind the um concept of this album well the concept of the album is is um uh Basically, you know, the story is supposed to take place in the near future, although I think it's more like happening now, but, you know, given everything what's going up in the freaking world. But, um, you know, basically, it, I mean, it's, it's, it's not like a like a totally, you know, unique story, but I think it's, you know, it's a story of, of, of struggle um, with oppression, um, you know, and, you know, obviously there's things like that happening right right now um and um you know uh, a story of, of of you know you know young people who are you know caught up in in the oppression and um but i think you know this particular you know being in the future where where maybe there's more more like you know like one government you know kind of overruling probably most of the civilized world um and uh you know there's a you know a, a, a ruthless you know dictator and uh you know and i think it's just about you know maybe young people who are struggling you know to to deal with with this kind of thing again not a you know a a new concept um and um you know them just kind of finding their you know their way um, and then there's also, you know, some things where there's some, you know, natural disasters happening um, at the same time. Um, again, you know, not out of the realm of, of possibility. Um, and then trying to tie in some of the things, um, you know, from the earlier albums. Um, yep. And it's not like the story is set in stone. Um, I, I think we're, we're it's I think it's more like Easter eggs, you know, and the fans can listen to it and maybe maybe draw their own conclusion of of you know what of the possible outcomes of, of what could happen. Well, it's an absolutely amazing album. You got that intro there, the descent into darkness that kind of sets the the vibe for it. But as we're saying, it is a concept album. But each track on this album is like, what do they say? All killer, no filler. It's um an absolute. I was sitting there putting little stars next to each track. On this track here rocks. This one here rocks. I'm um, from that opening one, the single when angels um kill, which came out about a month ago. Um, tell us about that single because that's an absolute ripper and a good one to start the album with as well. Yeah, well, we, I mean, you know, for obvious reasons, we, you know, we felt that was, uh, a, you know, a good first single, you know, because, you know, I mean, bam, it, you know, it smacks you right in the face. It's obviously the title track, you know, which, you know, you want to keep that stuck in people's brains. Um, and, you know, we kind of wanted to, um, you know, introduce one of the songs that, that um, you know, are, are a little bit, in you know you know some of the songs if if you if you notice probably have a little bit more of a modern um you know edge a little bit more modern production and and we you know we're doing that on purpose because you know we you know we have to evolve you know we can't keep doing you know 1980 1980s uh you know um you know music forever um but but yeah we wanted we wanted some songs that you know that 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 have a little bit more of a modern sound so that we can so that we can stay current and relevant and and also hopefully bring in some new younger um, oh, definitely audience, an audience so we felt that that was one that bam you know let's let, let let's just go out of the gate you know you know strong 
Well, it's a rip and track and like it must be good for you because you've been around like the band so long and then you've kind of reformed. I think it was around 2010 you played that Keep It True Fest over in Germany and you had such amazing feedback as well, which kind of led kind of use you and pushing for the band to kind of get the, the the next album out, the third secret. So it must be great, as you're saying, to have like these older fans going, fuck, it's really good to have Fifth Angel back, but also these newer fans coming along, you know, going, wow, you know, that must be really cool to see for you. We need to, you know, because I don't know how long the original fans are going to be <laughs> around, you know. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and that's kind of one of the cool things, some some of the things like I've noticed on the uh, comments, uh, you know, a lot of people, are their first time, first time they're like, hey, this is my first time, you know, where the hell did this band come from? You know, they've been around for 30 years, so, so I think that, that, you know, that was really kind of one of the goals that, you know, that we wanted to do is, 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 you know, we, you know, we want to grow our fan base. Yeah. It's always um, fun for me too. Oh, you go, John. But, Sorry. But at the same time, I think there's enough tracks on this record that are still really classic old school fifth angel. So that, so that the old guys aren't going to be, you know, disappointed. Well, it's a double album. Like, there's so many great tracks. I sat down here. I'm like, um, I, I got to ask about We're Immortal because you actually played that at the Keep It True Fest, which is really cool because you had that comeback show and then to kind of right. play this newer track off of the album for them over there. It must have been really, really cool. Tell us about that and then also the track. You know, and it's a great sing along song. You know, and the Europeans they love that shit. Yeah, you know, they they want. You know, they love singing you know that's why they go to the shows they want to they want to sing along with with the, with the with the song and and they're so involved um and and obviously that track was kind of you know written to target that audience yeah, there's some really great tracks that have you kind of singing along. Like after the first listen, I come back through um, Seven Angels, was Ripper, Five Days to Madness, Ashes to Ashes, the whole bloody album. It must have been fun kind of making this. When did you just kind of dive into this? And whose idea was it to go, let's do a double album? We've got so much material here. Let's get this done. You know, that, that, that kind of, uh, well, first of all, it was a very difficult record to make. Yeah, um, yeah, I betcha. We started during COVID and, and that created a lot of problems, you know, all kinds of freaking problems. But, um, you know, the, uh, you know, Ken, um, you know, cause the, you know, the double concept album, we had really been talking about it even before we had really been kind of playing with the idea, even back with the third secret. Um, we even thought about it, but we figured, we decided not to because, hey, this is our first album coming back. A double album might be a little bit too much, you know what I mean? And, you know, we, we didn't want to rock the boat too much. But he, the, but the third secret does have a little bit of concept in it, you know. Um, so so we kind of tested the water there. And then, and then during the COVID thing, we thought, you know, like, you know, what the fuck, you know, we, you know, what do we got to lose? You know, you know, cause, cause they're, you know, people are either going to love it or they're going to hate it. And yeah, we're rolling the dice a little bit, but I mean, what do we got to lose? Um, uh, it's absolutely rip an album, John. Material. We really had the material. Um, it was just a matter of, of really kind of fine tuning, you know, the songs in order to, to create the story. Yeah, so um, also they look really good on the vinyl. I do quickly want to mention that people jump over and get your pre-orders for this album because it's an absolute ripper. Those vinyls look really cool. I was watching the um, unboxing you done on the 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 page oh, the yeah. other day, <laughs> dude, with the blue vinyl oh, and the CDs. And, and, and totally, no one listens to fucking CDs anymore. <laughs> I, I totally lived that. I mean, I wasn't even planning on it, and I just you know I I just happened to be one of those moods i think i think i maybe i had a beer or something you know <laughs> and 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 my girlfriend standing there i'm like i'm like i'm like grab my phone and, and and film me doing this and i just totally winged it and it just 
and it, and it just it just roll. I just I, I just like roll with everything. You know? It looks really good. That you must, as I was saying, it it was really a really good vinyl and um yeah. nuclear blast. It must be good to have them kind of kind of be behind you when you come up and go, hey, look, this is what we want to do a double album. Not many people do double albums, and I'm I was born in 1980, dude. I love double albums. There's so many double albums that I have that are just. We're going old, we're going old school here, and uh, no, no, they, you know, you know, they they are so great to work with because they, you know, they they just let us do whatever the hell we want. You know, they're like, hey, if you guys think that this is gonna work, it'll work. You know, and 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 we'll make it happen. You know, they they always. They have like been, you know, great supporters for everything that we have done, you know, up to this point. So, um, yeah. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely great label. Everyone go grab those vinyl. Um, Steve Carlson on vocals, man, absolutely ripping, ripping, phenomenal bloody job on this album. I, I do have to say it must be good for you to sit back and kind of see him belt this album out as well because it's unreal, and dude. This is his first professional album. Yeah. You know, the guy, now the guy has been in the music business, um, you know, for, you know, all of his life, but he, but he's, he's never really done um, a professional record on this level. So this is really uh, his, his first one. And the guy, and, and the funny thing is, is I've known the guy for 35 years back in Seattle. Um, I played in a cover band with him, um, you know, um, and it was just funny how things worked out um, that, that that he was introduced to the band, uh, you know, because, you know, he, he had moved from Seattle to Phoenix where Ken is and, and a mutual friend of ours, this DJ guy, um, when we were looking for a singer, uh, this, this guy's like, hey, man, I know this local guy, you know, he, he does all these like tribute, you know, bands and stuff. And, uh, and he brought Ken out to see Steve play. And Ken was like, damn, this guy is like really, really good. And he brought him into the, into the studio, you know, had him sing like three songs. And, and then he sent it to everybody, you know, and everybody was like, oh man, you know, you know, who the hell is this guy? And he's like, well, this guy's Steve Carlson. I'm thinking Steve Carlson, Steve Carlson, the same freaking guy, you know, from Seattle It's like, yeah. <laughs> isn't that cool how life kind of happens like that it's just it's just crazy because because if you would have told me that you know that this guy you know from this club band would would be a uh you know a record level singer i would have said no fucking way you know and and sure as shit um the guy the guy just shines on this record oh yeah he's um, got a great range you know and you know, and, 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 and Ken, I have to, you know, and Ken, you know, obviously produced him. So, so Ken was really able to bring the best out of this guy, you know, you know, because, you know, cause he was, he came in, you know, with, with like, Hey, I'll, I'll just, I'll do whatever the hell you guys want. You know, there was no kind of attitude like, Oh, well, I got to write the, I got to write the lyrics and I got to, I got to write the vocal melodies. None of that bullshit. He's, he was like, he's so humble. He's like, dude, you know, you just tell me what you want me to do. And, and, and so it's almost like he was like an instrument um, for Ken, you know, cause you know, Ken is, you know, the one who wrote all of the lyrics and, and, and the vocal part. So Ken is hearing in his head, um, you know, he, you know, and, and then he, he was able to just, you know, have Steve bring all of that out into, you know, real life. And it, it was just magical, you know, and, and Steve just, he just sounds amazing. And, the, and there's so much passion and emotion, like, you know, like, uh, you know, on a lot of these songs, you know, that are just very, you know, the, and, you know, Fifth Angel, we have always been about the vocals. You know, that has always been our focus from air you know from every album and um and we have always you know the music and the playing supports the vocals and it's no different with this record because i think they stand out amazingly oh the, oh, the whole lot like your bass lines you know are just pummeling and driving it sometimes and those 
guitar riffs are just absolutely sitting here like going, wow, this is insane. But they don't, but they don't step over. No, the it all you sounds so I, bloody good. Like they fit perfectly where, where they, you know, in other words, all of the instruments, even, you know, we got great players, but yep. that's not, we're not trying to showcase Ken Mary's drums no. or, 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 uh, or the lead guitars or the bass. You know, those instruments all to support the the song and the vocals. So so every those things are all, you know, they all fit, you know, and 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 they all complement, you know, the vocal. And and that's the that's what we do best. Uh, definitely. As a fan, I found myself second playthrough. I was already singing along to this, like some of these tracks, like I had it in my head and I'm like, dude, this would be so good to see live. Have you got some live shows planned for the release and everything? Um, I'm, I'm yeah, we're working I mean, on we're it. Working, working on it, but I mean, I it's a tough know. time. I know, dude. It's just unbelievable. I was actually, before these interviews, I was looking to see what it would cost just to fly to Australia you know, a, yep. just round trip for the whole band, nine grand. So everyone just, get along and buy the albums, Australia. Make it go yeah, number one. Yeah, right? That's just to get here, just to get there, right? Okay. So, you know, for us to to you know to to come to Australia, we would have to have a string. We would have to have enough shows, you know, to to make it financially, you know, feasible. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's why everyone needs to get along and support the band, not just fucking listen on Spotify. Buy those sweet vinyls, even the CDs right. that nobody listens to that I stick in my collection. I still buy CDs, John. I'll chuck them in my collection and there's they sit. <laughs> uh, this has been an absolute pleasure, John. I could talk a whole lot more, but you've got a whole stack of interviews, man. I'll get let you get a coffee in. Do you have any last words, shout outs, thank yous, or anything else you'd like to add in there, my friend? I mean, I would I, I would just say to you know the Australian fans, um, uh, you, you know, request request us, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, put in requests to the promoters and the festivals, you know, to to get us there so that we can play for you guys, you know. But we need the we need the the fans to demand. You know, like, hey, we want to see Fifth Angel here so that, you know, that the clubs, the, 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 the arenas, you know, whoever's booking shows there, you know, know that the fans that we want to bring Fifth Angel there so that we can play for you guys. That that would be my my biggest thing. Because we want to come, but 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 we need you guys to help us, you know, help bring us there. Yeah, support's a two-way street. Well, you got to go along and buy the albums and bloody play it on the radio and scream to the rooftops, get Fifth Angel down <laughs> under. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> Cheers, John. You have a lovely uh, evening, mate. Much for having me on the show. Absolute pleasure. Day. Thank you, mate. Oi, you're tuned in to Joy That Aussie Metal Guy, so make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss any of his sick content. And remember, stay brutal, you legend.